Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah al -Brik. The President of the Supreme Council for Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, stressed Bahrain's keenness on providing premium health services. He noted the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to develop the health system. Dr. Sheikh Mohammed made the statement as paid an inspection visit to the Halid Bumahar Health Center in the presence of Health Minister Dr. Jalila bint Sayyid Jawad Hassan and other officials. He was updated about about primary health care and the implementation of the self-management projects as part of the National Health Insurance Program, Sahasi. This SCH president was updated about the distribution of My Health Card to the citizens residing in Mahara Governorate, noting the intensification of efforts to continue implementing the projects included in the National Health Insurance Program, Sahati. For her part, Dr. Jalila stressed keenness on adopting further initiatives and programs aimed to promote quality health services, stressing the importance of the self-management project prime health centers or healthcare centers acting chief executive officer dr lulua schwetter underlined the importance of optimal application of the choose your doctor program which falls under the self-management project <coughs> The ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Kingdom, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, hosted the UK Home Secretary, Priti Patel, and the ambassadors of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries to the United Kingdom, where the meeting focused on issues of common security concern. The ambassadors conveyed the greetings of the GCC interior ministers and affirmed the long-standing GCC-UK relations. The Bahraini and the GCC ambassadors also welcomed the British government's decision regarding the implementation of the new electronic travel authorization, the ETA system, that exempts Bahraini and GCC citizens from UK visa procedures. Security threats faced by GCC citizens residing and traveling to the UK were also discussed, where the ambassadors highlighted that the security and safety issue of GCC citizens is a top priority. They also shed light on the importance of developing a robust incident response plan. For her part, home For her part, Home Secretary Patel affirmed that the British security authorities maintain the security and safety of all by intensifying response efforts. She also emphasized the importance of expanding GCC-UK security cooperation. The General Secretariat of the Representatives Council concluded the Parliamentary Culture Programme for the general public, which aims to raise the social awareness of citizens regarding the working mechanisms of the legislative authority in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The two-day Parliamentary Culture Programme witnessed the attendance of over 60 participants in addition to representatives of the Supreme Council for Women, the Legislation and Legal Opinion Commission, and a number of officials and employees of the General Secretariat of the Representatives Council. The Parliamentary Culture Programme was based on two main axes. The development of parliamentary culture and the electoral process in addition to reviewing the powers of the legislative authority, the political rights law and plans for the advancement of Bahraini women, as well as raising awareness of the culture of political and legislative work. At the conclusion of the parliamentary culture program, the General Secretariat of the Representatives Council announced the launch of a program for preparing candidates for the elections which will be held next September. The Capital Government held a coordination meeting with representatives from the Ministry of Education and the Capital Municipality based on the recommendations of the Capital Government Coordinating Council headed by Governor of the Capital Government, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, to discuss the campaign launch of afforestation of government schools in the government. This is in line with the National Afforestation Plan approved by the Cabinet, which affirms or aims to double the number of trees by 2035, which is consistent with the Manama as a healthy the city program as well as the green capital project that are adopted by the capital government director of the engineering services and investment department in the government dr jamil hassan roway stressed during his presidency of the coordinating or coordination meeting the capital governance keenness to support pioneering initiatives that contribute to increasing the green areas in the capital and enhancing community awareness regarding environmental health the meeting reviewed the timetable for implementing the plan discussing the needs of the afforestation campaign and determining the number of trees to be planted in addition to identifying the work team consisting of school students and the capital government and a number of volunteers.
In our international news, the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, has issued a directive to invest one billion U.S. dollars into Pakistan in confirmation of the kingdom's support for the country and its people. The directive came during a telephone call between Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan and his Pakistani counterpart Bilawal Bhutto Zardari. The regional and international issues of common interests were also discussed during the call. Bhutto Zardari welcomed the investment in Pakistan and added that he highly valued the solidarity expressed by Saudi Arabia and all possible assistance provided by the kingdom. The President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, held a meeting in Athens with the President of the Republic of Greece, Katarina Siklar Opolo. During the meeting, the UAE President expressed his happiness with the increasing development witnessed by the relations between the two countries in recent years. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed indicated that despite the challenges of the corona pandemic, trade exchange between both countries during the past two years increased by 17%. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed also met uh, Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis during his trip, during which he discussed bilateral relations and ways to enhance them with the Greek Premier. The Emirati President's visit came as UAE and Greece agreed to create a 4.22 billion US dollar initiative to invest in the Greek economy. Officials from the United Arab Emirates and the United States met today to explore ways to further enhance military ties. The UAE commander of the Naval Forces, Rear Admiral Sheikh Saeed bin Hamdan bin Mohammed Al Nahyan, received commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command Vice Admiral Brad Cooper and his delegation as both sides reiterated the friendly relations between both countries. During their meeting, the military officials reviewed UAE-U.S. cooperation to ensure more coordination between both sides. Egypt's Prime Minister Mustafa Medbouli said the country's economy grew by 6.6% in the previous fiscal year 2021-2022, compared to a growth rate of 3.3% in the previous year. Medbouli made the remarks during a press conference at the cabinet's headquarters in the new Alamein city. He said the last quarter of the past fiscal year suffered an impact due to the Russian-Ukrainian war and its effect on development rates, noting that Egypt's project's growth rate, projected growth rate for the end of the fiscal year had been estimated at 6.2 percent. Madbouli added that the unemployment rate in the country stabilized at 7.2 percent, which is described as an encouraging figure. A fast-melting Swiss glacier has revealed the wreckage of a plane that disappeared over the Alps in the late 1960s. The Altsich Glacier in Valais is one of the largest in the Alps, and after a trek in August, a mountaineer chanced up the eerie discovery. In 1968, a Piper Cherokee aircraft came crashing down on the glacier. The wreckage was never found, but in August it was uncovered after over half a century, and it was all down to climate change. The glacier is melting at an unprecedented rate due to global warming. If it continues to disappear by the year 2090, only 10% will remain of the glacier, according to experts. In recent months, two unrelated sets of human remains were also found in Switzerland by hikers.